guys, welcome back. Here we are, we're enjoying nature. It's way too nice to be inside right now. Let's learn some jazz. We're gonna talk about how to play in creative new ways over one chord. So what are some modal approaches we can approach one chord without staying in the same mode or the same kind of feel the whole time? How can we switch it up, add some colors, and how can we see playing over one chord in different ways? So there's a variety of ways to look at this. So this is a question from my buddy Adam in England, and he has an amazing band called the Physics House Band. You should definitely check them out. So he's wondering how we can approach improvising or playing over one chord uh, in different ways. So first I'd say, let's just establish an anchor. So A minor, let's say we're in the key of A minor. So A minor, we haven't determined whether that's gonna be an A Dorian, an A Aeolian. A Phrygian or a Locrian um, between all the modes that we could choose from we have those variety of minor modes so already right there we do have some possibility so if we're just vamping on an A minor chord we can play an A Aeolian scale we could do a Dorian scale could do a Phrygian scale. And then lastly we have Locrian. So that's going to give us already right off the bat a few varieties. So establish an anchor, establish what you know, key center or anchor you won't actually go home to. So let's say we choose Dorian. So Dorian's gonna be our minor position, our home position for this A minor chord. So now we have a home position. We've determined the notes that we want to resolve to. So they're target notes. So if we want to go outside the key or outside the uh, home position we've chosen, we know where we can resolve and how we can land safely back in the A minor Dorian position so that our lines can resolve and they actually sound um, like they're going somewhere. We can go out and then we can come back and uh, be able to navigate effectively. So now that we've found that we're in Dorian, we can venture off to Phrygian, we can venture to Aeolian, we can venture to Locrian and safely come back to our Dorian position as our home target mode. A couple other varieties would be melodic minor and harmonic minor. So if you wanted to, let's say we choose harmonic minor, it's going to be a regular, a natural minor scale, an Aeolian scale with a major 7 instead of that flat 7. So. Or a melodic minor, uh, if we want to add an additional color, we'll have a raised 7, major 7, and a raised 6 as well. So it's basically a Dorian minor scale with a raised 7. So that's going to give us another choice, you know, we can almost write all these ideas out on a piece of paper. A minor, Dorian is our target, here are some next door neighbors we can go to who are our modes that are similar to A minor, and then there are some secondary modes we can go to, which is like a home away from home, so we have melodic minor, natural minor, harmonic minor. Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. So anything that's not Dorian, because Dorian's our target home mode. And then if we want to play outside and really go outside the key, go far away from home, there's a variety of choices here, and it's really up to you and how you make it work. So, so basically we're gonna switch between descending and ascending, and then we're gonna switch between descending in major thirds and descending in major seconds. So that's gonna sound like this. a D sharp which is going to be an outside tone so we can easily modulate that and slide that right into key so we land on an E which would be the fifth from the A minor so it would sound like this so there's 
there's an outside line you could use which starts on a chord tone, a minor third, and ends on a fifth above the root of the A minor. So that's one idea, and you can create your own paradigm of rules where you just say, actually I'm gonna go down a whole step and then a major third, or I'm gonna descend in thirds and then up a major third. So you can decide to create a little chart or a matrix for yourself and experiment with some of these ideas and use them as kind of fractalized geometric patterns within a scale sequence and apply that over a this A minor chord, for instance, and you can move that around. So if we started on a different chord tone, we'd get a whole different set of colors. So you can see where it fits and where it doesn't fit. And you can write that out, what chord tones, what intervals you're getting, um, what scale degrees above the root um, you're getting per position. And then you really know what's going on and you'll be able to find out which positions work best for you and you can memorize those, integrate it into your arsenal of tools for spontaneous improv. So basically, we're going to go through a couple other varieties here. So say we want to do simple pentatonic scales. Pentatonic scales, this is probably the easiest way to change your sound over a minor chord, or any chord nonetheless. So we're in A minor, obviously the most fitting position is going to be an A minor uh, pentatonic. So playing over a minor chord, you can move that up a whole step. So if you're playing a minor pentatonic, a major second above the root of a minor chord, you're going to get the major second, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the root, and then you're back to your major second. So you can just like open up the sound a little bit, take you out of just one flat three, five, flat seven. Um, so just that can help you open up the sound a little bit, take you out of the regular minor pentatonic sound, moving that a whole step and getting you those new colors. Another variety is playing that minor pentatonic on the fourth. So if you're doing that, you're gonna get the fourth, you're gonna get the flat sixth, flat seventh, the root, and the flat third. colors by moving the pentatonics around from the root to the major second to the fourth above the root and you get those certain colors. Nice way to simplify it and play outside. So while we're talking about playing outside, another way to do that is if you play a pentatonic scale, you can see where all the notes are, right? Now where are all the notes that aren't in that scale? So if we're playing all the notes that are in the minor pentatonic, if we flip that on the axis of all the notes that aren't in that pentatonic. So if we get all these notes now. So we can memorize that visual and be able to see, okay, these are where all those notes are. So it's kind of like a Phrygian, like a B flat Phrygian. So you can also think that way, if you want to play outside, resolving back to your A minor pentatonic. ideas you can play over that using the kind of opposite non-existing notes in that minor pentatonic to play outside reserving resolving back to your target notes within that minor pentatonic in your main root position the last thing I want to talk about is imagining a chord progression going on during that A minor vamp so if you're playing an A minor vamp you can imagine a B minor 7 flat 5 to an E altered an E7 flat 9 or an E7 sharp 9 back to that A minor. So in that sense, we'd be able to play through a bunch of different notes using substitutions for, for each one of those chords. So in that sense, we'd be able to play through a bunch of different new notes 
that would give us a variety of new positions and even substitutions for some of these chords. So we're doing a B minor 7 flat 5, we do a B Locrian arpeggio. That'll be kind of like our, our go to, and then our E altered. We can use a E altered uh, scale. back to Dorian. So if we want to play through that, you can imagine having different chords happening while that A minor is being vamped on. That way you're not stuck to just staying in one chord the whole time. You can think in different paradigms, different chord and substitution opportunities that will bring you back to be able to target your home bass, your home note. And um, that's just a great way I, I like to use that sometimes. So use that, try it going for it. So you can use a lot of approach notes, a lot of chromaticism, and um, use that as to your advantage when you have a target note. So different ways to think about it. Um, it's like I wouldn't play all these ideas in one jam session or during a song, but it's just everything that you could do messing around with. So enjoy, have fun, practice through these, these ideas, and I'd say make a matrix. So you have your A minor, and then write down all of your you know um, neighbor scales, which are your, your Aeolian, natural minor, melodic minor, Phrygian, Locrian, kind of like your, your secondary modes. And then write down like if you want to go out, these are the chords or scales that you would use or play over. And, um, or progressions that you would play over that emulates that land to an A minor. You target to your Dorian home bass note, or scale rather. So these are just some ideas. Go for it, have fun. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, just, just leave a comment below and I will make a video for you. So go for it, have fun. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos each week. And I will talk with you guys soon. Happy practicing. Thank you.